So in this video, I want to show you how I actually use ChatGPT in my qualitative data analysis and my thematic analysis uh, to make it so much better, so much more professional. So I want to show you how to do it, how to apply it to your codes and themes, uh, just to make sure that the final result is much more impressive. Uh, there are so many tools these days, ChatGPT and other AI tools, but are they actually worth it and how do we use them in data analysis? So here I'll show you. Uh, as you know, I still prefer and I normally use specialized qualitative data analysis software for my analysis. It's still uh, better, in my opinion, more reliable than uh, ChatGPT or similar tools. But increasingly, uh, what has been happening is that I've been using ChatGPT increasingly as my co uh, companion, basically. It's something that I bounce my ideas off, sometimes uh, course correct and generally adjust my analysis. And it's been brilliant uh, in that role. Also, although I, I said I do prefer to use qualitative data analysis software, I know this is not always the case for all of you for a whole bunch of reasons. So it, it can be the cost of that software just or you lack in time or lack in confidence to use it. And ideally, of course, you would hope to use ChatGPT or similar platforms uh, to actually do the analysis, to use it for your analysis. And the good news here is that it's also possible. And I have several videos in which I walk you through uh, the whole process and how to use it for the actual analysis for coding for thematic analysis uh, and i also have an ebook uh, in which i share similar tips and techniques as well as uh, prompts that you can copy and paste to your own uh, analysis so first let's quickly watch the ad for that ebook don't forget to check out my ebook entitled scholar's guide to ai assisted thematic analysis which is a useful resource for thematic analysis whether you do plan to use ai or not it contains plenty of useful advice, step-by-step -step instructions for thematic analysis, and a list of prompts that you can copy and paste into ChatGPT. Okay, so how do I use ChatGPT in my analysis? So I usually, uh, if I use it, if I use it, I uh, start using, I bring uh, bring it into my into the process at this stage, at the further stage uh, of, of the, the coding work of the analysis, namely focus codes or, uh, or in other words, axial codes. So I don't uh, use it to code my data, although it's possible, like I said, just watch these videos if you want to find out more about it. But usually I do prefer, of course, to do it uh, by myself. So I do all the coding. I have all these uh, initial codes, which if you've been following my videos, tend to be pretty detailed because I do uh, usually promote this detailed uh, in-depth approach to, to coding, which means that I have lots of codes that are pretty descriptive. As I often say, they are essentially summaries of what's being said in the data. Lots and lots of codes. And stage two of that coding work is to put these codes into some sort of groups. Now you can already ask your, uh, you can already ask ChatGPT to uh, do some work for you at this stage. So of course you can just uh, give it a, a list of random codes and just ask it, can you just put them into some sort of groups. So you can do it by all means. Uh, but the thing about ChatGPT is that the, the more autonomy you give it, the less control you have, the, the more chance of uh, ChatGPT just not being reliable, maybe doing something that you don't necessarily like. And I like to be in charge, especially when it comes to my data analysis. So so usually I do have some idea for, for these groups already. Uh, so I don't really like to ask ChatGPT just to create some general groups. So, uh, what we'll be doing here now is using ChatGPT, and as you can see, it's my uh, my G GPT, the one that I created. It's not that I'm trying to uh, sell you anything because it's it's completely free, just like the free version of ChatGPT. So you can use the normal free ChatGPT, or you can use my thematic analysis uh, ChatGPT, which is something I also talked about in one of my videos. So uh, so I have it here, and uh, the study to give us a context. The study is about a hypothetical study is about uh, restaurant owners experiences uh, following the pandemic. So that's what we were trying to find out. Uh, and specifically, I'll now paste uh, some codes, a list of codes that I created. These codes are about uh, challenges that they face. So that's uh, that's what these codes are about. So it's already been sorted a little bit. Like I said, it's not just a list of random codes. I already know at this stage that uh, within all these uh, random codes that I have, and it's likely to be a big list, uh, I already see that maybe some of them uh, are about coping strategies, some of them are about uh, suggestions, some of them are about challenges. So I like to do this initial work myself as well, because like I said, I like to just be in, in control of my analysis. But then sometimes what happens is that within these groups, I may have, so I may have lots of challenges and I just, I can tell that there are different challenges. They relate to different things. 
uh, it it sounds it looks and sounds a little bit and feels a little bit confusing if I just have a, a random list of all sorts of challenges that uh, uh, you know they only have in common that they are challenges but uh, among each other th there is nothing that they share nothing that they have in common so I feel like it would be a good idea to maybe introduce additional uh, grouping within the challenges and this is where uh, sometimes I may use ChatGPT this may simply be because I don't have any ideas for grouping. This may be because I already have some ideas for groupings and I just want to uh, basically have a separate coder uh, in a way uh, do the grouping as well so that I can compare and maybe use some of these ideas. I may want to confirm whether my idea for grouping is, you know, is what ChatGPT will also provide. So all sorts of, uh, of reasons. Sometimes I'm working on a study where I may not have enough expertise and I feel that, again, maybe there is a better way of organizing these things. So any reason, but I do like to group uh, the codes. And here, as you can see, uh, what I did, I pasted these codes and I pasted a prompt, a prompt in which I explained to ChatGPT what this study is about, because it's good to, to give it a context. If I just have it's a random list of codes, chances are, again, it will try to be creative and maybe just mess something up. Uh, here I explain what these uh, what the study is about, and I asked it to group these challenges. You don't have to do it, but I also uh, just make sure that it doesn't that it tries to put each code into one group or one category. You don't have to do it, and it's okay sometimes if actually one code fits more than one categories. But I do prefer, whenever possible, for clarity, to have each code just appear one in each category. So I paste this and I paste a list of codes, uh, and just ask it to come up with some ideas for grouping. You can now see what's happening. It's given us uh, these different ideas. So customer behavior and uncertainty, staffing challenges, financial pressures, regulations and compliance. So all this looks pretty good. And this is exactly what I wanted uh, to do. Operational adjustments. I kind of like this expression and I don't think I uh, is the way I would have described uh, these challenges. Of course, I'll have to go through it. And what does happen often is that sometimes it uh, does, doesn't seem to make uh, make sense what appears in that group. Sometimes it misunderstood the code or uh, any other reason. So always, every single time, you have to go through it and just make sure that you like it as well, you like these groups. What follows uh, from here is that uh, sometimes I adjust these groups. Sometimes I just take one or two ideas. Uh, sometimes I take all of these ideas, but it really depends. Like I said, it's just a good additional tool for some additional ideas. And now quickly, the second way in which I can use ChatGPT and it uh, develops from the first way is that now what happened is that you can see that we have these different groups. They look kind of good, but what doesn't look good are the codes in the in the groups. So uh, they are good as initial codes, but not necessarily as actual themes, you know, was not sure when the customers would return or uncertainly when and if the customers would return. People less willing to spend money. Uh, felt that people had less interest in eating out. So it's just uh, people would mainly dine outdoor, but this can be affected by weather. It doesn't really sound that nice and compact, not not good enough for what I later hold to be a, a sub theme of a, of a theme probably that I call challenges. So so some more work is required here. And that's exactly where I may use ChatGPT again. So uh, in many situations, I just just reward it myself. And in many, again, I, I can either combine my work with ChatGPT or compare my work or just ask it for ideas. So what happens is that I instruct it uh, to review the wording of individual codes. I may just uh, throw or copy and paste all codes in one group and just ask it to, uh, to review them. But then again, chances are that uh, it will give me just one suggestion for each code and I just won't like it. So uh, because it's usually not for all codes anyway, I prefer to do it uh, properly and proper in-depth uh, approach where I just submit and I just uh, paste one code at a time and ask it to give me some ideas for how to make it sound better. So you can see my prompt now. It's not a perfect prompt by any means the way I talk to ChatGPT. I'm sure you, you, you'll be more elaborate and maybe more effective. But here basically I'm saying I'm going to give you individual codes. Can you just clean them up a little bit? And here's the first code. So people would mainly dine outdoors. Uh, but this can be affected by weather. So here are ideas, outdoor dining impacted by weather, weather affects outdoor dining, outdoor dining dependent on weather, and so on and so, so forth. So I actually like outdoor dining impacted by weather, or maybe 
I would actually say the impact of weather on outdoor dining or something like that. So, so already, already I have some ideas uh, I, and I like them more than my initial attempt. Let's take some other ones. So let's just take this one, a long code about struggling to reinforce and implement new policies. Uh, and again, I'll just paste it and see some suggestions. Uh, and I'm sure we'll have something better. So again, difficulty enforcing new policies, struggling to enforce mask policies. They just sound better, S some of them. I don't always like uh, all of them. Like I said, I very often combine uh, elements of a couple of these ideas from the list. That's why, again, I prefer to go just one code by uh, one by one. Uh, so I have all five ideas for each code. I can kind of combine them flexibly. But what usually happens is that the result is just uh, so much better and I'm I'm just happier with what I see because there is a limit to how many ideas you can have and and therefore this is like I said almost like having your little research assistant that's helping you so that's about it it's not the only way I can use ChatGPT there are other ways but I didn't want to make this video too long there are other ways and other ways in which I can kind of bounce ideas back and forth and basically that's what it looks like so the process I'm analyzing the data here and I'm sometimes asking ChatGPT for these ideas and then uh, adjusting these ideas so basically it's a it's a collaboration almost but i'm definitely in charge so there's i'm the primary principal investigator and chatgp is my research assistant but i hope you learned something new please like the video share it comment if you enjoyed it if you learned something new uh, recently my videos been affected badly by a couple of events uh, so i'm trying to get back on track and i need your help with it so hopefully you like it you share it you comment Ask me questions. Remember, if you're struggling, reach out. We'll try to work it out together. I have plenty of students and clients with whom we're working on their individual studies, coding ideas and all other uh, things.